I said, what time is he here? 7.30. I said, you know, it's seven o'clock. And we go, well, how are we going to do this? I said, I have no clue. I have no idea where anything is around here. Welcome to Achieving Failure, a podcast about the adventures of life. I'm your host, Chris, and join us each week as we bring you a collection of autobiographical stories that made us who we are. From the glitz and the glamour to hitting rock bottom, this is Achieving Failure. You too can almost be somebody. This week we have my father Dennis on the show with us. Join us as he tells us crazy stories about working in the Audio Visual Club and hosting an event for Warren A. Miller, an American ski and snowboarding filmmaker. You and the AV nerds were in the, what, the janitor room, the sound booth, where, where were you guys? Well, you know, you're, you're in high school and you're given some privileges. So you say, hey, uh, you want to get, you want to become part of um, a club or an effort. And this gets you some, you know, credentials in the, in the high school. And it was the nerdy kids that really joined the audio visual aids group. For anybody under the age of a million, you, you won't remember what this is like, but in school they used to have films in, in class, and you'd have, have to have a, a technical person, a student, uh, hook up the projector, make sure it's there in the classroom, and then, you know, it would be there for the audiovisual portion of the, of the classroom. So that all, all had to be done before and after hours. So being part of AV was kind of unique. It was interesting. Uh, you'd have to get there really early in the morning. And then little by little, you, you had some special privileges where you could go places other people couldn't go. You didn't have to go to study halls. You could get out of study halls. And we wound up wangling ourselves in office, uh, me and my buddy Bobby, Bobby Blum. So we had this little closet, which we turned into an office. And, you know, hey, we're pretty cool, right? You know, and uh, yeah, we'd have a bunch of little nerdy guys and we'd tell them what to do. Take this to room 302 and take this to room 407 and, uh, you know, hook up the projector, put the sound system up and get those things done. So we're, we're big bosses there, you know, with the president of the AV group. And uh, we report to Mr. Jim Lane, who God knows what he did there, but uh, he took care of things. And, you know, we're curious kids. We're, we're probably pre-college kids, so we're, we're always doing some engineering crap, always putting stuff together. And one day I noticed there's a box on the wall, and it's got screws. It's got a cover. And um, I'm, I'm curious. I say, hey, Bobby, what's behind this, this box? He said, I have no idea. I said, but, you know, I got a lot of conduit run into this. There's, uh, there's got to be something here. So we, uh, we, of course, we open it up and we see a thousand wires, connectors, God knows what inside this box. And I'm saying, whoa, we hit the mother load on this one. I said, this is important. This has got to be important. So well, what are we going to do? I said, I think, you know, if we get a signal tracer, we could probably figure out what's happening on these wires. They're not, they're not AC current. They're signal wires. It's a telephone system. It's something. It's, maybe it's the intercom. I don't know. So we start tapping into this, and after a few days, we figured it out. This was the intercom from the main office, the principal's office, to every room in the entire building. Every room. I said, oh, this is good. This, we, could, we could have some fun with this. So we figured out how to label every single connection so we'd know what room is what. We'd test. We'd send a kid up. I said, go, go, uh, go up to 312, and uh, if there's anybody in there, just ask for somebody. Just say something, because I'll be monitoring. Okay, good. Good. I got 312. Yeah, okay. So we're doing a sound check. Yeah, don't mind me. And uh, so we, we, you know, it took a week or two. We had everything labeled. I said, okay, this is great. I said, now, now that we can use it as a microphone, and we can listen in on every single, and we would. We'd listen on... We'd hear teachers screaming at the kids, you know, sit down, stop, go to your seat and shut up. And I said, oh, I don't think they should be doing that. It's, it's kind of, you know, not the practice of our fine high school to be yelling at students like that. But okay, it was fun. And then I said, you know, I said, we could reverse this operation. We could broadcast to rooms and uh, that might have some value. So, you know, maybe Larry needs to get out of class for some reason. And maybe somebody could call the classroom that he's in and ask that Larry be, report to the vice principal's office for a special message. 
And uh, I said, let's, let's, let's give that a job. Who's got a good voice? Can't be a squeaky voice. Okay, so we got somebody to do that. And sure enough, that worked pretty good. That worked really good. That got us a lot of favors. And, uh, and then one day we said, you know, we need in the morning to be in control. In the morning, the PA system goes on. Every classroom listens attently to the, the announcements of the day. I said, we should be given the announcements of the day. Who are they to give the announcements? We, we are in control here. So we did. And we started saying silly stuff. And of course, high school, you're not too smart. So you start saying stupid stuff. And I said, and now a musical interlude. And we went into West Side Story. It's blasting and blasting, and, uh, and everyone's panicking now. You could hear it in the hall. You could hear the music, what's going on? Oh, my God. Is And people are trying to call in at the same time this stuff is blasting. So we um, had our little fun. It's almost time for class. Button it up. We go to class. I wasn't in math class more than two seconds. Mr. Lane comes in, goes right to my desk, and he says, how the hell did you do that? And I said, how did I do what? What are you talking about? And he's, I know it was you. I know it was you. I, I don't know how you did it, but I said, uh, I, I said, the only thing I can say is electromagnetic propagation. And he said, yeah, that's it. I knew that was it. And it was all bullshit anyway. You know, so I said, well, I'm not, he said, come on, we're going to the principal's office. And I said, well, if you could show me how I did it, I, I, I really don't understand what you're, what you're moaning and groaning about, but. And for, it went on for two or three days and they knew we did it. They just couldn't, they didn't know how we did it. And uh, finally, of course, being nice young men, we, uh, we fessed up and said, okay, we'll show you how we did it. Okay, here we go. Because we had a picture over this thing too. You know, it was like blocked. Nobody, you can't walk into this little closet. You know, there was nothing there that was special, but it was behind that little painting or the poster or whatever we had in the, in the way. And, um, and, you know, there you go. We were successfully, uh, we were, we, we, we failed successfully, I would say, in that particular thing. We, uh, we got what we wanted. We learned a lot. You know, there's very, when you have a creative mind and you want to learn about things, we knew, we knew every room, every wiring. And that was before we got keys to the classrooms. Oh, but that was a whole other story. Okay. Well, that was Once you give thing. young people keys to classrooms, you know, God knows what could happen after that. Well, the reason I ask you is because I remember you told me the story about when you had to do a show. It was a stage show, and you and your friend were doing the lighting. And one guy was downstairs testing the lights, and the other guy was upstairs with the switch. And you guys were going back and forth, testing the on and off switch. So... Uh, some years ago, there was this fellow Warren Miller. You can you can Google his name. He's he's world famous. He is he was world famous then, and he still is. He, even though he's he's dead, he's, people have taken carried on his uh, his business. Uh, Warren Miller started. He was the first to really do uh, fine photography for skiing. Really? Uh, he would uh, he was the first to mount um, uh, you know uh, equipment on the backs of skiers on the fronts of skiers. And they would ski down the hill filming other skiers. And how long ago was this? Well, this goes back to the 60s. Okay. Yeah, Warren Miller Miller was a big name. And they used to use his footage in films. They they would hire him for major productions to do these impossible scenes on the slopes. You know, people skiing and then you see them and you're two inches away and they're going down the slopes and you wonder how they got that take. Well, there was a guy on skis doing that. Yeah. Uh, and, And... he would go around and he'd give shows, local shows, and, and we hired him for our high school. And it was all about, you know, the wide world of skiing and the fun of skiing, yada, yada. And so, sure enough, Dennis and Warren were given the responsibility of making sure that everything is set up for the auditorium that evening, okay? So Mr. Miller's going to be here, you know, he's world famous, being, you know, make sure everything is working right, make sure that the film projectors are correct, and you have the astigmatism lens on because he's really fussy about it, and put a new projector bulb so it doesn't burn out, and have the have everything just right. Okay, no problem, no problem, we got it, we got it under control, you know. So we're there, and of course we're there very early, and we're setting up, and he said, okay, let's check the lights, house lights, and... Um, uh, I'm downstairs and I turn the house lights off because there are two sets of house lights. I want to check the other one. So Warren presses the button up in the 
uh, up in the projection room and turns them on against Warren. Turn the damn thing off, would you? And he, I, he said, no, I'm not going to turn it off. I said, I, I want to check the other lights. Turn them off. So I press the button to turn the lights off, and they go off. And there's a giant solenoid, four, 400,000 amperes for all these lights, you know, and you hear it clunk. Okay. And then he turns it on again. I said, you bastard. I said, would you just, would you stop? I'm yelling up at him at the projection room. Just stop playing with the switch. So I, at that point, I got so pissed off. It was a, it was a double action switch. One button on the top, one button on the bottom. I pressed them both at the same time. He did exactly the same thing. I guess two minds think alike. And we had this great light show with the lights blinking on and off. And hearing this <laughs> giant solenoid clinking, clink, 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 clink. And then all of a sudden, a large bang. And everything goes dark. I mean, everything. Not the new lights, the old lights, everything. The whole place is pitch black now. Jesus. Just the hall lights are on, which might have been emergency lights. Who knows? <laughs> and I go, oh, shit. I said, what time is he here? 7.30. I said, do you know it's 7 o'clock? And we go, well, how are we going to do this? I said, I have no clue. I have no idea where anything is around here. And we have a flashlight, and we are crawling in the walls. And we've got this panel open. And these fuses are about the size of my head. And I'm saying, these are like 500 amp fuses. I, I, first of all, I don't have a 500 amp fuse. <laughs> Secondly, I don't even know how to get a 500 amp fuse out of here. I can see this one's burned out. I'll bet you this is the one. I said, but how the heck are we going to get it out of here without killing ourselves? So uh, we don't know. Right? But it's 7.05. Now it's 7.06. And we're sweating this one out. I said, okay, I got a stick over here. Let's pry this whole thing out and see if we can't steal one from someplace else where it's not going to matter. So we find one someplace else in the dimmer console, and we pull that fuse out, and we go, and we swap it out, and we punch it in with a piece of insulation and turn the lights on. Oh, thank God, they're back on again. Now it's like 722. People were already coming in, and Mr. Miller's coming in. So where, where are the lights? What's what's the matter with the lights? I said, fun ghoul. Uh well, we just we just powered them on. He says, "No, I want the bright ones on." Well, they take like ten minutes to come on because they're halogen lamps and that they have to warm up. So I thought you guys were here setting up. I said, "Yeah, well, we had a little power failure, so uh, we're just starting them up now. It's all bullshit." And he's you know he's going, you know, I want to be sure that there's no astigmatism on the screen here. And do you do you have the screen? Let's do a test print over here. Let's do. Could you go up in the projector room and, and run something? Oh, that's no good. Oh no, this is no. It's too yellow. It's too. Bright. God almighty, what is wrong with this man, right? I, I'm sweating bullets over here, and he's complaining about it. I can see the filament on the screen. I said, it's a fucking 16 millimeter printer. Of course you're going to see the filament on the screen. What are you moaning and groaning about? Of course, he's a perfectionist. So amongst, now we got about 200 people in. It was amazing that many people wanted to see this show. They're in here. They fill the moms and the dads. The kids are in there. They want to see about skiing down the slopes and all this crap. And Finally, we get the thing wired up, and um, by the skin of our teeth, we get it started, and it's running, and Warren wants to go, or who, it was either him or one other person, he decides to go take a leak in between reels. Now, in those days, you have more than one reel to show, so you have to be there right at the switch point, and there's an indicator on film to, to, for projector switch. So he goes and he takes a leak right at the moment that the thing had to be switched. <laughs> so now it goes white. The whole screen goes white. And Mr. Miller, he blows up. He's got, he's nuts. And what's going on? And I hear it upstairs. Click, 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 like this, right? <laughs> and the film is flopping off the reel. And, uh, and it's, nobody's up there. I race up there. I race up the stairs. I hit the projector real quick to get it back on again. Oh, now he's really pissed. I'll never come here again. This is a ridiculous thing. I'm just so annoyed you with you people. So, so Mr. Miller is all, all, all for shimmel. He's a just, oh my God, this is just terrible. I'm never going to do this again. I'm never going to be here again. This is yeah, the worst evening of my life. I'm thinking, if this is the worst evening of your life. It's pretty sad. So, uh, yeah, again, great failures, uh, you know, but hey, I don't think the people minded nearly as much as he did because they, you know, they kind of said, yeah, fine, whatever. This happens all the time anyway. And, uh, you know. They, they rolled with the punches on that one. It was it was okay. But it was it could have been a total disaster. It was only a partial failure. So I guess you know, there's a, a successful failure, right? Another great high school story, right? Hey, this is your host, Chris, again. I would like to say thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of Achieving Failure, and we hope you enjoyed our adventures. And if you have a life story you want to share with us, shoot us an email at aflvpodcast at gmail.com. 
That's AF, Achieving Failure, LV, Las Vegas, podcast at gmail.com. Thanks again, and we'll see you next week.